sticking me while I load it up. So anyway, you can see how big this quartz crystal rock is. Um, the reason I'm gathering it is because I want to later take the bush hog of the tractor and mow this Cherokee rose bush out of the way next to the uh, lake and clean it up a little bit. And this giant big quartz rock here has been in the way. Okay, so I'm covered up with briars. These are some very, very sticky briars that hurt. And they're Cherokee rose. It's a Cherokee rose bush. Uh, they grow wild on the property. I have thousands of them on the property. And actually they have a few um, what we call rose hips, as you can see here. Here's a rose hip, here's a rose hip, a rose hip. They come much more than that. There's many more than that on the, on the uh, plant in the fall. And I collect these and make rose hip tea from these rose hips. They are very high in vitamin C and they're extremely uh, good for your health and your immune system. But right now this one is in my way and I want to remove it. And um, so I had this large crystal, quartz crystal rock laying right behind me in the bottom uh, of this grassy area and also uh, underneath this Cherokee rose. And the Cherokee rose grows so fast. I mean, extremely fast. Now, I'm gonna remove this one. I'm gonna get rid of it so I can keep this area clean around my lake. That way I can manage the lake uh, edges better. And I'm gonna bring the tractor, I'm gonna change the attachment and bring the tractor down here and, and mow that down with a bush hog and get it to the, the point where I can actually mow it with, with a mower. But um, one of the reasons that I'm uh, showing you this is because I couldn't mow it because this giant quartz crystal rock was in my way. Now, if I were to put the bush hog on the back of the tractor and the blades hit this, it would dull the blade so badly because this is extremely hard rock. It's in the silica family, very hard glassy rock. Uh, my property is covered up with quartz rocks and uh, beautiful rocks, by the way. And I'm gonna use these for some masonry work that we're gonna be doing here on the Welch Family Homestead. Definitely wanna make it beautiful. And it's one of my favorite, rock, favorite rocks to use when doing some masonry work to make it a very beautiful project. And, um, and so this particular rock is going to be going eventually into a very special place in the cabin but the last thing you wanna do is hit one of these rocks with your bush hog. And as I'm going through the pastures over the last 20 years, I have removed so many of these rocks. Some of them, when, the, when I first bought the property, I didn't realize these rocks were even out there. And you would not believe how many times that I had to sharpen the blades and, and even fix issues where uh, had to replace blades because these rocks will do some damage. And, you know, with perseverance, with a lot of time involved over the last 20 years, I've removed almost every rock in any of the pasture areas that is exposed above the ground. And some of them I've had to do some digging uh, and move them out of the ground. Just part of that rock might have been poking up out of the ground and had to dig, dig it out, you know, and get it out. And when I did, I might've had to remove several because what happens is they'll work their way up to the top and maybe only, it's like an iceberg, only the tip of it will be showing and it will do some damage to the bush hog. And um, then to remove it, you just can't pick it up. You have to dig it up and remove it and then fill that hole back in with dirt. Luckily, this one was above the ground. I just needed to move it for several years and it was next to the corner of the lake and um, so now time has come that we need to clean up around the dam, need to clean up around the reservoir here at the lake. Let me show that to you very quickly. So here is the lake. Um, it's about 18 feet deep out there. 
I, if you'll notice, I'll show it to you closer here in a moment, but um, I have a valve out there at the bottom of the lake where I can drain the lake. I have a dock out here, out on the edge of the dock. It's about nine feet deep. Out here, it's about 18, 19 feet deep, about 5.2 million gallons. Now, all this grass on the edge of the lake, it'll lay down toward the lake. If it's 18 inches deep or less, it will grow. If it's 18 inches deep or more, it can't grow. Now, a portion of this is deeper than that, and that's where it was growing back here, and now it went through the winter, and it's just laying over. The more of that that happens, the more that will fill in and cause that edge to be more and more shallow as that organic matter starts decaying and building up more and more decay, decayed matter. And eventually it becomes more shallow and then that grass will keep creeping out. Now it won't go all the way out because obviously it can't go that deep, but it can start making the edges of the lake further and further out. We're gonna dig all this out and get a good crisp edge around the lake. And as we do, we'll dig down and get it 18 inches deep and we'll put a barrier there to where either it'll be uh, some poles or it'll be some rocks or what have you. And we'll make a direct straight off edge so that none of that swamp grass can grow in the lake. Now, if you'll notice right here, this is just a tip when you're building a pond or a lake. This is about a, I don't know if you'd call this a lake or a pond. I don't know what the, the threshold is of when you quit calling it a pond and start calling it a lake. I've always called it a lake. It's about 450 feet long and it's about 150 feet wide right here at the, the end. And if you notice, I have posts and there's a fence here. And the reason that is, is because as we have storms, things might get washed into the lake. And the last thing I'd want to do is to have a problem because of something washing into my spillway and stopping that up, you know, clogging it up. And if it did, then I would be in a mess because then the lake would fill up above the dam and it would wash over and wash through the dam. Now, this is the reservoir of the dam. As you can see, it's a very hefty reservoir. Yes, we drive uh, large vehicles across it. And um, quite a bit of water coming out of the spillway today. Um, I have a concrete spillway coming out of the dam, running all the way into the, uh, the creek below. And that gives you a little bit of idea of the preparation that you have to do sometimes to prepare. Now, it's also time for us to do a good cleaning on the side of the reservoir. That's about a 25 foot drop right there from here to there. It's about a 25 foot drop. And we need to get all this down to the point where it's like a grass a grass field, not filled with weeds and small trees. And the reason for this is because over time, and it only takes a year or two because it grows very fast here in the Western North Carolina mountains, we have 60 inches of rainfall per year. So these kind of trees right here will grow this large in just a couple of years. This white pine right here, you'll notice this white pine this white pine is about three years old. So it's been about three years since we've clear cut and trimmed this out. Poplars, as a poplar right here, poplar tree, tulip poplar. And they grow extremely fast, especially when they're next to all this moisture and water. So you can see everything that needs to be cleaned out. And I need to, there's a lot of work here to do. A lot of work here to do. You can also see some floats. My neighbor's dog is barking at me right now. He's coming down the hill. I have two little dogs coming down here to check me out. There's some houses up on the hill here. And we'll just have to see how nosy these two dogs are. They're wagging their tail. Beautiful dogs. So 
So anyway, this is another thing I wanted to show you. I want to zoom in on that. This is my drain. There's actually a, a stainless steel tower that goes all the way down to the bottom of my lake. That goes down about 18 feet to a butterfly valve that I had installed. I installed it myself. And um, <clears throat> you see how vicious these dogs are. Chevy is going to give them an attitude adjustment if they keep that up. Yeah. So, um, okay, we're checking out to see how vicious this dog is going to be. Are you okay? Chevy is standing up straight. And this is the way dogs see if they're going to be nice or not to each other. They're smelling of each other's backsides. And um, so it looks like they're going to be friendly. There we go. All right. You guys are still in the show here today. So as I was telling you, that's the valve that goes down to a concrete pad concreted into the ground good foundations goes down to a butterfly valve that will empty this entire lake it takes about two days to empty the lake and as it does uh, empties empties very fast so um saying all that i am going to unload a um I'm gonna go unload the uh, the rock that I collected a moment ago. Thank you for joining me here on the Welch Family Homestead channel. And um, I'm gonna quit entertaining these dogs and get Chevy back up to the cabin before uh, there's an altercation because I wanna keep my neighbors happy. And I also wanna keep my dog happy my dog is much bigger than theirs, and the last thing I'd want to see happen is issues.